Hello, YouTube. Today we have a kitchen scale with a little problem. We insert the battery in its compartment and it immediately starts up. This is normal for this model. We can change the units from grams to ounces and back to grams, but it is not possible to tear a weight. The button that zeroes the scale is inoperative. Also, after some time of no activity the scale enters in what I call clock mode and there is nothing we can do to return the scale to its scale mode. Except for removing the battery and inserting it back again. Certainly the problem must have something to do with this tactile switch here. We are going to tear this thing down and check it out. We start by removing the screws under these rubber feet. Now we unscrew the plate to get it out of the way. Handle off and we are in like Flynn. We have to remove this washer and that is all there is to it. We have the PCB that holds the switches, the main board with a deconversion, digital processing and LCD, the load cell, connected by four wires, and the wires to the battery compartment. It is good to know that it has a separate PCB for the switches because if the switch is really the problem, the repair is going to be easy. But I could not resist taking it all apart. We have an unidentifiable epoxy blob in the middle of the main board. This here is an EE prom and various other components, which we are going to see in detail in a moment. On the other side we have a crystal and a jumper. And here we have the LCD with the zebra connector and the corresponding contacts on the main board. We also have these two rubber pieces to help maintain the LCD in place. On the load cell we have a label where we can read ROHSG in 5 kilograms, which is the scale capacity. That is a detailed view of the main board. It is single-sided FR4. All components seem to have been hand sard. You can see how they are not perfectly aligned. There is also flux residue all over the place. These holes designed as strain relief or at least as guides for these wires were not used. This dirt here was left by the rubber foam adhesive used to keep in place the LCD which goes on top of this board. The LCD is secured by six screws that go through these holes here, although I have only found five of them. The blob houses all active devices, from DC differential amplifiers, to A, D converters, voltage regulators, voltage references, microcontrollers, etc. Except for this Shenzhen Lies Electronic Technology Co., never heard of them before, 24CO2 here, a 2 kilobit EE prom. For those of you playing along at home, since there is not much variation in the technology used with these scales armed with an oscilloscope, it is not difficult to guess what each of these pins do. Various tests points scattered throughout the board in the Zebra elastomeric connector pads here. Down there you can see the elastomeric connector itself and its prosaic Zebra pattern. The reason why I only found five screws securing the LCD is that one of them is broken. Its threaded shaft is visible fully inserted in its hole. Since I have not found its head, I presume it broke off during assembly, but a QC passed must have been issued anyway. Here I have the PCB that holds the tactile switches. The first switch corresponds to the on, tear key, the switch in the middle is for setting the clock, and the last one changes the weight unit, grams or ounces. The faulty switch is this one apparently. This is a common wire which is to be connected to each of these individual wires through each of these switches. It is possible then to check if the switches are really making this contact with the help of a ohm meter. So I will connect one of the probes with an alligator clip to the common wire while I will check each switch with the other probe connected to each of the other wires. So if I press a leftmost switch contact is made to the leftmost wire, excluding the common, as you can see on the ohm meter display. The middle switch, when pressed also makes contact with its corresponding wire. The last switch is pressed and nothing happens. So our suspicions prove to be correct. I do not use the middle switch because I do not use the scale clock. So instead of replacing the faulty switch, I will swap the wires that connect those two switches. So that the middle switch now will be the on, tear switch. Then later perhaps I will change the labels on the housing to reflect this. By the way, this reminds me somewhat of Jupiter 2. 
the spaceship in the TV series Lost in Space. One of the things that I have always wanted to do is to measure the consumption of current of this scale when it is in the clock mode, and it draws 9.6 microamps. And when it is in the scale mode it draws 3.4 milliamps or thereabouts, quite considerably more. So here we have our scale completely reassembled. I re-glued the feet back with contact cement. And the scale is working perfectly, as you will see. I will measure this weight and now what the key designated by on, Terry used to do is going to be performed by the key designated by time. Then I zero it and I have my tear weight. And if I want to reset the scale I can press it again and it will work fine. Another thing I did, which I have not captured in video, but it is also a very simple job, is that I installed a power jack here. I can now connect a power plug from an adapter and power the scale externally for extended periods of use. I find the CR2032 coin cell a little skimpy for the power consumption of this scale. On this label here I wrote the voltage, that is 3 volts, the maximum current consumption, around 3.5 milliamperes, and the polarity which is the infamous center negative. I did that evil deed because I have other gadgets that use 3 volt center negative jacks and I want to use the same adapter for them all. The final test will be to resuscitate the scale from the clock mode which it goes into every time it gets idle for one and a half minutes or so. And, hello world. I think we can call this a winner. Thanks for watching, have a good night and stay beautiful.